So I'm going to talk to you today about what's possible for creating freedom in your life and your work. All right, let's see if we can get this clicker to go. All right. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the career ladder as a metaphor for managing your career. Okay, it's a little bright up here, but I can see that's just about all of you. Now I want you to think for a minute about whether or not that model, thinking of your career in this way, has ever led you to feel something like this. <laughs> Tired, stressed, frustrated, burnt out. Nowadays, this starts in high school, if not earlier. For some of you, maybe it goes back to preschool. I don't know. We feel pressure to get a perfect GPA, do all the right extracurriculars, all so that we can get into the right university, pick the right majors, and double major, and triple major, have the right internships, and then get the right job lined up before we've even graduated. For how many of you has thinking about your schooling and your career in this way led you to feel bad or unhappy? Or like you're comparing yourself to your peers and looking at where they are on their own ladders and feeling self-conscious. Like maybe you're not moving up fast enough or at the right pace or finding the right opportunities. Our current career models are outdated. They don't work anymore. No longer are people working at the same job for 30 years, working their way up the corporate ladder with the safety of a pension plan waiting for them at the end. I'm gonna share with you today a new framework for thinking about your career that puts the power and creative control back in your hands. As you can see from looking at this image of the ladder, it's so linear, it's very fixed. It's either straight up or off into oblivion. I know this model all too well. I have been an overachiever my whole life and it's been a blessing and a curse. When I was 10 years old, I started a family newspaper operation out of my living room, carried that up through high school, played sports, started clubs, was the editor-in-chief of my high school paper. Then I got to UCLA, and I took a leave of absence at the start of my junior year to help start a company with one of my college professors. There I was the first employee, wore five hats, as many people do at startup companies, and later went back to graduate with my class at UCLA in three years with double majors, college honors. Soon after that, I got a job at Google in 2006 on the training and development team, turn it down a little, thanks. delivering AdWords product training. And by the time I was 24, I'd been quickly promoted and became a manager. By the time I was 25, I was completely and utterly exhausted. Tired, miserable, burnt out. I had never felt worse, <laughs> to be honest. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. I had been so focused on getting to that next rung of the ladder that I had never stopped to think about why I was doing it, whether it was worth it, or whether or not that was what I even really wanted. I'll never forget a quote that I heard in a training course at the time. Is the life you're living worth the price you're paying for it? And that really resonated with me because here I had been killing myself just to achieve, 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 do more, faster, farther, more. And by the time I was 25, I literally couldn't do anything else. I was wiped out. I felt ridiculous. Here I was at the Disneyland of companies, as many of my friends would call it, and yet I was so unhappy. And to, I didn't know what to do with that. I felt spoiled, I felt entitled, I felt like there was something wrong with me. Because here I was, and my role was no longer really a fit, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried to ignore it and pretend like this wasn't happening, and I've, you know, I've been successful my whole life, I can figure this out too. But these red flags kept on smacking me in the face, as I like to say it. I felt I got sick more times in that year than I had ever been in my whole life. And as I wrote in my journal at the time, a dreadful hum of anxiety permeated my day-to-day -day activities. So not fun. And to make matters worse, much to my humiliation, I cried at work, in meetings. Each time became the new lowest moment of my career. Yeah, it's not, it's not cute when that happens. 
So I decided at that point, I realized something is wrong. My career model is broken and I need a new philosophy and a new approach. I'm a self-help junkie. I've read like 200 personal development books. Nothing had worked up till that point for me. About a year and a half ago, I moved to the career development team at Google because in my evolution, I've learned I'm really passionate about helping people reach their full potential. And I heard a quote from Carol Bartz who suggests that we manage our careers like a pyramid, not a ladder. What I like about this is that, you can't see him. Um, what I like about the career ladder, have you guys been, can you see the slides? No, oh, <laughs> joke's on you, I can see them. <laughs> All right. Imagine a giant pyramid. This is now using your imagination time. All right, someone could have said something. I mean, there's like 500 of you, right? Um, think about a pyramid. That's better than a ladder in the sense that you can build a strong foundation and you get to move laterally, not just up or down. But with that image of a pyramid still in your mind, picture yourself in Egypt, very exotic vacation. <laughs> Think about what might still be wrong with that model. Where might it fall short? Many of you are still in school at CMU, so think about this real quick. It still points to a peak at the top. Managing your career like a pyramid still points to this apex in the sky where suddenly you've made it. I don't think that's ever really true. CEOs, presidents, people at the top of their game, they still want to grow, they still want to learn, and they still want to develop and advance in their careers. Okay. <laughs> this is why I'm first. Yeah, so I work out all the kinks, and then everyone else gets to have this, the smooth flowing presentation. All right, many of you have smartphones. My new philosophy, of my way of thinking about career development is like a smartphone. So this is career in the age of the app. Your smartphone, your education and your upbringing is your base phone, your out of the box phone that you get to customize and do with it what you want. What's great about this model is that it's dynamic, fluid, nonlinear. You get to download apps for whatever makes you feel happy and whatever makes you feel fulfilled. So this could be classes you take, skills you're learning on the job, experiences like internships and things that you go do or you learn from other people, and education, whether that's undergraduate, a certification program, a master's degree, or a PhD. Keep on using that imagination. Just think of a really great <laughs> smartphone. Good, just making sure you're still with me. There are three core principles to managing your career in the age of the app. The first is that every experience is unique. So imagine, break down whatever you're doing into its component parts. Every job will teach you valuable skills. So often feel, people feel pressure when they're at the entry level that I don't love my job completely, something must be wrong, I, I failed, I didn't get a job that I was completely passionate and thrilled about right out of the gate. What I tell coaching clients and people that I work with and people at Google is don't think about it that way. Focus on the skills you're learning. Maybe you're in a sales role and you're learning sales skills or communication skills. In my case, when I was delivering AdWords product training, I loved being in front of a classroom. Was I passionate about the AdWords product? Eh, not so much. You know, did I love talking about how to set a daily budget and place analytics tracking code? No, it was not my passion. But doing that taught me how to stand in front of a room and keep my cool when the slides don't show up. So thank goodness for AdWords product training. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See, really, I just, it's an interactive demonstration of why skills and breaking your jobs down is effective, proven my point already. Okay, the second key to managing your career in the age of the app is to, well, I'll go in reverse order. One, people are so afraid to dream. And what I really wanna encourage you to do is to explore. You don't have to know which way to go. You're not gonna see the whole path. 
So often people early in their careers or at any stage in their career, there are things that you might be tiptoeing around that you really want to do, but you kind of can't see how to get there. That's okay. It's totally fine not to know how you're going to get there. And in fact, it's inherent to the process of a big goal or a big dream that you don't know how to get there. That's what makes it exciting. That's what makes it energizing and fun, and you don't know what's going to happen. In my case, I started working on a book in 2008, at the very end of 2008. I had no clue what was going to happen with this thing. I started writing it. I thought I was going to self-publish and get this book out by 2009. Well, my book came out last week on Tuesday. <laughs> March, April now of 2011. So you can see there were a few bumps in the road that I couldn't plan for. But I kept going. And I kept taking the steps toward what I really wanted. And I kept downloading little apps that were going to help me. Going to speakers association meetings, taking writing classes, blocking off 15 minutes a day to start writing, to start. Jumping back. OK, keep with the imagination theme. There's a like hand. There's a little plant, and there's some seeds. So point number three that I want to share with you is if you're not feeling 100% fulfilled, that's OK. Again, any book on, and any advice on dating and relationships will say, don't look to your partner to make you feel 100% fulfilled, to complete you and make you happy. One of the pitfalls I see a lot in people at their jobs is they're expecting their job to completely make them happy and that suddenly something's wrong if I don't feel 100% fulfilled every day. I want to encourage you to plant new seeds. And again, you're not going to know what the tree's going to look like, but plant them anyway. There's an example I want to share of my coworker, Seth Marvin, at Google. Seth said to me, he started in 2006, and he said, I want to change the world. My mission in life is to make the world a better place. And I'm like, OK, that's, that's great, Seth. Good for you. Yeah, good luck with that. You know, <laughs> That's very ambitious. And let's see how that goes. I wish you the best of luck, but I couldn't envision. How was he going to do that? Well, good thing it's not my job to envision Seth's dreams. Just like it's not anyone in your community. It's good if you have support, but you're not always going to get it. Seth had the idea in 2007. Google posted a culture ideas page. And Seth said, I want to get all Googlers to volunteer during the same week of the year. And so he had this idea. And the first year, and this was at Google, we call them 20% projects. Really, we all kind of call them 120% projects, because we all know it's in addition to whatever we're already doing. The same is going to be true for you, whether you work at Google or not. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> yeah! Woohoo! OK, check in with yourself. How was your imagination on that? Did you get it? Good. OK. Excellent. So let's get over to Seth, if we can. That's Seth up there. The first year that Seth started Google Serve, he had 3,000 people in 40 offices. By the next year, he had doubled it. He had 6,000 volunteers in the same week from over 70 offices around the world. And that's not the end of the story. Seth then parlayed this into his full-time job at Google, managing Google's community outreach and volunteer engagement. So there he was, planting those seeds, getting that app ready to go. And if he had waited until he saw a rung on the ladder for this volunteer outreach job, he would have never gotten it. It did not exist at the time. So the point here is plant those seeds and see where it takes you. Four tips, and I'm going to zoom through these, for managing your career. This model is not without its flaws. The, the biggest pitfall that I see is you're, you've got so many apps. Your phone's doing a lot. Your career's there's a lot going on. So it's all about managing your energy and managing your time and your bandwidth. For starters, draw boundaries and make sure you recharge. Or you and your phone will be headed for a crash. We don't want that. Take it from me. I have crashed a good number of times. Tony Schwartz, who wrote the book The Powerful Engagement, recommends that you forget the marathon mindset and focus on sprints and recovery instead. Rather than trying to keep a steady, even pace all the way through, he suggests that we 
we're going to have sprints. We're going to have periods where we work very intensely, and we're doing a lot. But make sure you build in that time for recovery and recharging. Second, delete apps often. Be vigilant about clearing clutter. When I give people career advice, I tell them, think about this like cleaning out your closet. If you're going to revamp your wardrobe, look at what's working, keep it, look at what isn't working, and throw it out so that you have room to bring new stuff in. Same is true for your phone, the same is true for your career. Number three, don't wait for permission. It's kind of what I was saying about pursuing your dreams, even though you don't see how they're going to come together yet. Take your inner critic as a sign that you're on exactly the right track. I might be the only crazy one who has little voices that talk to me, but if you have a voice that says you're not smart enough, strong enough, you know, intelligent, you are too young, you're too old, and I got those simultaneously when I was thinking about writing my book, <laughs> good. The louder those voices are, the more it means you're doing something big with your life, that you're about to take a big risk, and that is so commendable. So instead of taking those voices that you hear as discouragement, take it as like, celebrate it. Hey, I'm doing something great, and keep on going. Finally, build and lean on your support network. In the case of my book, it has taken a small army <laughs> over two and a half years to get this thing out to where you can actually hold it in your hands. I am so grateful for all the support I have had from friends, from family, from my blog readers, from the community on the internet. People have been so supportive from Google. Don't forget that you have your own armies out there ready and waiting to help you. And that's not to say that everybody will, but there are plenty who are there for you. So make it a point to not only build a support network and focus on those relationships, but lean on it when you need to. I want to leave you with two overarching umbrella thoughts. You are the creative director of your life. There is no great ladder in the sky. There is no ladder competition. There is no resume submission checkoff process that you need to constantly strive to be better and better for that just hovers around you for your life. It, do it doesn't exist like that. You're the creative director. You get to customize as you go along and take pride in the journey. Why did I do yoga teacher training? Because I felt like it. But it was a good app, and I needed a balance for everything else I was doing. As Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just have to take the first step. As my dad said to me about the book, you probably don't even want to see the whole staircase. <laughs> If you had known how much work that was going to take two and a half years ago, it would, have been, it would have been more intimidating. Thank you so much. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for your imagination. These are some ways you can get in touch with me. And my book that was just released on Tuesday is, um, there's a chapter for every area of your life, and it will help you think through a lot of this stuff. So there's tips, quotes, coaching exercises, and recommended reading for every area of your life. And I'd love to hear from you if you end up checking it out. So thank you so much for having me, everybody. Thank you.